Oh, man. <sighs> gotta get the energy up. <sighs> gotta get the energy up. Oh, we gotta make sure we save these. So, there we go. Let's do this. All right, here we go. It's, 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 it's actually, it's just kind of hard to see with these on. I'm not gonna lie to you. Today, we are going to be saving your saves on Football Manager. This has turned into a series and one that we have really loved doing. Why am I, why am I wearing these? Also, my fan is on, so unprofessional. Now then. <sighs> So the first one we're going to be looking at is Jamie, 3682, otherwise known as 3682. It's Slough FC, back to back to back promotions from the Vanarama South to League One. Yeah, I have no idea. Either one of my strikers decided to score 42 goals last season. Well, congratulations. I've always said if you can get out of Vanarama National, you should be able to get out of League Two in the first season. No problem, because it's so hard to get out of Vanarama National that you're basically already ready for it. Now, going all the way from north, south, straight through, I mean, it's a great achievement. Uh, understandably, my squad's well below the level needed in League Two, let alone to survive League One. Lowest wages by a long shot, that's to be expected. Even if your talent level is there, your wages are gonna be way low. Uh, the board won't allow me to get a senior affiliate. Finances are good, but I can only sign players who are a couple divisions low. I've relied on basically revamping my squad each season with 10 plus free transfers, but only two of my signings have really, have really stepped up. So is there any way I can scam a few wins without getting blown out every game? Seeing these, uh, some of these players play football is painful, quote, on, on play. Okay, so this this does not seem like a good situation. Five matches, five losses now that you've made it up to this division and a complete and utter inability to play any kind of defense in League One. I need to look at the teams that you've played so far. Obviously, uh, like Southend, uh, Burton in particular. You've got Charlton coming up next, but obviously you haven't played them yet. Uh, this isn't a gruelingly difficult schedule that you've been faced with, so I, I don't know if we can blame it on that. We can probably blame most of it on your club atmosphere. Uh, you have a lot of players that are unhappy. And I think your constant turnover has, has has been an issue. You've already made promises about the poor locker room atmosphere, a promise that you likely cannot keep because you're likely to be losing. Uh, let's take a look at maybe board expectations, fight bravely against relegation, and let's look at what you're doing tactically. This uh, is the main selected tactic. We're gonna make sure it's the one that you're training. It is. This is the main selected tactic. It's too offensive for a team that is trying not to lose. Now, I'm going to suggest something and it's going to feel weird, but it's something that in Football Manager 20 helped a lot when I was one of the worst teams in a league I was playing and it happened to be in Colombia, but it still counts, okay? You Colombia-ist. Look it up, it's a word. Regardless, focusing on what is important, we were in Colombia and struggling, we were conceding, and there's something in the match engine, which obviously has changed from FM20 to FM21, but I guarantee you will see improved results, that when you invite pressure and you do not have the ability to be a good team, which you, you clearly don't, I mean, full offense intended to your guys, considering the fact that back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back promotion has just happened, your club has had to become professional and has only been professional for one year. Uh, even though there's a big turnover in your team, you're essentially cobbling together a team every year that's not gonna have the talent at this level to compete. And so when you back off and you try and maintain your shape, you are inviting possession and inviting pressure. There is something in Football Manager that when you take these lines, and you bring them up here, that it just gives these guys less room to work with. Being farther up the field is gonna help you a lot in this situation, and another thing that's going to help you out a lot is having somebody in front of the back line. One of the most dangerous things in Football Manager 2021 is when you get that attacking midfielder hovering between the lines. You're able to get somebody behind the midfield in front of the defenders. Your defenders are too dumb to know what to do in this situation. Most defenders actually are. It's not an easy situation to be in. That's why the 4-2-3-1 is so effective or was so effective until everybody started using a defensive midfielder, which is what you should be doing. It's not that there's anything wrong with this formation. It's very, very, very similar uh, to what I used with Oriental Dragon in the lower leagues in Portugal. But what's important to keep in mind about that team is I was an upper half team in terms of talent when I was using this formation. Maybe a mid-table team in terms of talent when I was using this formation a second time. Certainly not the worst team in the league when it came to talent, which I'd be willing to bet that you are. If we look at 
our comparison on the analysis report and we go through each i mean you have the worst defense you've got the worst midfield this is actually this is actually the worst thing i've ever seen <laughs> this is so bad like i expected it to be bad right when i looked at it i expected it to be bad i did not expect it to be you are the worst team in the league you have the worst passing long shots vision stamina teamwork tackling technique and decisions in the league there are 24 24 teams in this league which means in 41 of 48 key attribute categories your team is the worst in the league they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand honestly it does not matter what you do tactically. You will lose a lot of your games when you are this bad. Your issue is in team building. Now, I know that you've jumped up through the leagues here, but you've signed a dude on free from Scunthorpe, Crawley, Carlisle, Gateshead, and then this Gavin Hunter character, who was a good pickup. Obviously, the goalkeeper was a good signing. Grabbing Rashid Ba, this was a good signing. You're doing a good job of finding these young guys. I, I Like, your team, writ large, though, is just so bad. Harry Warwick, uh, he needs a haircut. I think that's a significant issue with your club. I mean, this dude's a 5'7 central defender with two strength i'm six two right this dude is a national team central defender that's he's about right here can't even see past the pattern but the key here is that you have fight bravely against relegation and so getting relegated is actually not the end of the save it's not the end of the world you're absolutely desperately in need of a senior affiliate but what, what's important to keep in mind is that with the talent level that your team has uh, that there's no way that a 17 year old guy loaned in from gateshead is the only loan you should be getting but essentially any squad player from a championship team uh, any bench warmer from a Premier League team is going to be a superstar on your team. And you should be scouting end of contract. Are you doing that anywhere? No. See up here where it says type, right? You want to put that on end of contract. Depending on where you can scout, I would recommend maybe going after all of Europe for end of contract players because England overpays everybody. Final takeaway is this. This has come down to your team building. You need to build a tactic that helps accommodate for your defense a little more, but you're also going to have to swallow the bullet a little bit, push your lines further forward, limit the space the other teams have to play in, and it is going to improve your ability to defend. That's just how it works in these football manager match engines. Scout for end of contract, guys. Hunt for free loans. You should max out the number of loanies you have in every season if you plan on continuing to climb through leagues or maybe in January being able to pull yourself out of this situation. Uh, best of luck and please keep me updated because wow next this is my first proper fm save i love it started in the national league work my way up to a job in the prem and in, in bournemouth so i guess that is like a journeyman idea my first season went really well i finished in a record-breaking position for bournemouth although i feel i have improved the team it seems i am stuck at this stage and i'm not progressing also training has been a big issue uh, and players are complaining I'm new to this and the training looks confusing. I need serious help. Okay, first things first, let's go to the training. Almost dropped my rock. I found this really smooth rock on the ground. Unusually smooth, right? It's been the latest thing that I fidget with on my desk. Some would say it's better than a stress banana and some would say it's worse than a stress banana. Reports on training, they're reportedly unhappy and there isn't a particular reason that stands out. So he's getting this email in his inbox. What you should do is click on the player, Go to development and training and down here it'll say the low level of team training might be causing the team's poor form jack clark feels the low level of training might be causing the team's poor form and ignacio ramirez feels the same which means you have a couple of players that are complaining about the low level of team training so when you go to training and you see on your overview you probably want to go to calendar right you can right click on a couple of these open squares and throw in if you don't want to get too crazy throw in one of these general training sessions if you have an aspect of your game that you would want to work on your team, and this is a good thing, wants to train more. So if this were me, and I was looking at this situation, I would throw in an outfield and an overall to wrap up a couple of days, make sure that you have a team bonding in there because it sounds like that your team is uh, playing in a little bit of poor form. At least that's what the players in the training are saying. And you wanna get make sure you get a match review at the end of every match, because that will help boost up your team cohesion, which is already very good. And your locker room atmosphere is very good. Uh, your finish last season was in seventh, and that is perhaps the best finish in the history of Bournemouth. I mean, you signed Dean Henderson, which congrats. I mean, he's a good goalkeeper. He's not an absolutely world-class goalkeeper. We're talking in football manager. I know people have their different opinions. And then you sign this guy, 
who is a defensive winger, which, uh, and I cannot stress this enough. Why? What is he actually good at? Right, Th this is what you need to ask yourself. What position is this guy going to play? Has nine tackling, 11 marking, and 10 positioning, so not an outstanding defender. Right, has 12 dribbling, 11 passing, 10 crossing, 10 finishing. Not an outstanding offensive player. Right, a vision is at 11, flair is at five. His athleticism's got him at 14 acceleration and pace and 13 agility. Yeah, this player can do a job, but it's not any of the jobs that you'd be asking him to do. Even though he has great potential, it's going to need to go up a lot in a lot of areas for him to be an effective player at a Premier League level. Your scouting assignments are definitely really well tailored. You've got your South Africa's covered. You've got your North and West Africa covered. You're going specifically to Colombia, which means you're watching the Twitch save. Check out the link in the description if you want to check something like that out. You also have North America going, Scandinavia going. I would recommend, by the way, actually scouting where you are. Because you do have a 17 foreign player squad limit. E e you should be scouting the UK and Ireland. I'd recommend dropping the North America scout, bumping him there. Because while it's not one of the best places to scout when it comes to getting cheap talent, there is potentially still cheap talent available and you should be aware of what's happening in your own domestic area, especially when you have so many scouts. I would be surprised if you couldn't hire more. You can hire three more scouts. Get out of my face. Out of my face! Your whole staff is short. And financially, your club is a boon because you're in the Premier League and you finish seventh just out of European places. A boon. Fill out your staff. Next time, try not to spend $60 million or $70 million on players that aren't going to affect your team. But if you spent that equivalent amount of money in Western South America, you'd have six or seven players, five of whom probably have a chance to be legit first team contributors for you in more important positions than defensive winger and goalkeeper. It's tough love, but it's true. You've done well. You've got a good eye for talent. You don't have a great eye for talent. You will get there. Be aware. Don't fall for the Scots. Next! That's never not fun. TMCC Rippage at West Ham United. I don't think I need any specific help, but I've just struggled to take the extra step in the prem. I finished ninth last season after... after after an absolutely horrific start in the second season, I'm destined for a similar fate. Can you take a look and verbally slap me in the face when you find something wrong? That is what I'm here for. It's it's an online save that he's like offline to send to me, which is nice. So you said your first season, we're in February 2022. You bounced up, you finished ninth. Now you are in 10th and living a very similar life to the one you led previously because of you set a poor start and obviously you've started to turn that around just picking up some nice wins you have Mesut Ozil paying him half the potential wage of West Ham beat Watford beat Bournemouth beat Aston Villa your offense is turning on but this slow start is there a lot of turnover in your team slow starts are usually indicative of bad cohesion lower atmosphere because of significant player turnover but it doesn't seem to me like well yeah I guess the reason you're succeeding now is because your team cohesion and atmosphere has recovered enough after the significant turnover uh, Leonidas Sturgeo that's not an easy signing but it's a good signing there's never anything wrong with Leonidas Sturgeo ever wow you're paying absolutely no wage on Ozil that is impressive I like how it says he's still in his prime hell yeah brother now with all those signings that you've made Nasi Nasi Unuvar and Leonidas Sturgeo are good pickups Akhmadozic is a good pickup this is a little too short for me in terms of the number of players that you signed that are not in that top potential area I'm not seeing top potential guys here I think you might have gone and spent a lot of money filling out the team kind of marginally improving your team at certain positions positions without thinking long term enough like what's the point of picking up Sam Johnston you know right like well we need to go grab a new goalkeeper but he's not you know we just spent 10 million to get a guy who's we could probably have gotten somebody of that quality for free right you just spent 26 million on Saeed Ben Rama are you going to be able to get where you are going with a signing like Saeed Ben Rama for 26 million you need to be able to take that money if you already had a team that got you to seventh you need to be able to take the money that you spent on Saeed Ben Rama, or got you to ninth, pardon me, and spend it somewhere else on a guy that's going to be able to take you further in the future. He's a good player, right? He's never going to, you're not going to get relegated from the prim starting a guy like Saeed Ben Rama. I mean, come on now, uh, you're making money, right? You're not making enough money to blow 26 million on someone like Saeed Ben Rama. It just, it doesn't make sense, right? And so the question is, I am 
ninth, and now I'm 10th. And when you take a look at the table in itself, you are two points out of seventh and being potentially in European places. So you shouldn't be beating yourself up too much. You are in the chasing pack right now. But if you want to make your team better over time, if you want to continue to improve, you cannot shoot specifically for the immediate gratification of signing Saeed Ben Rama when an 18-year-old Colombian will be better than him in three years. Another option available to you as West Ham that I, I don't think you're using, you've loaned in Tommy Smith from, from Swansea, this is obviously not a game breaker, is when you are a mid-table Premier League club, you're mid-table in any top league, going to major international clubs like Barcelona, and Real Madrid, Juventus, PSG, right, Bayern, they'll have people that are available on loan. They're not planning on paying their entire wage because the wages are always too high. And you can improve your team by picking up a Chupo Moting who starts as a center forward for you and can score 15, maybe even 20 goals. We're talking about football manager sense playing on a mid-table team in the Prem to push you up towards Europe. You are not completely absolved from looking for loan players until you get to that next point because you do not have the money to sign all of the guys that are going to help get you to that level. At least if you need some cover, you can loan somebody in from Manchester United or Man City or Liverpool that's going to help you. You don't have to pay for everything yourself, especially when you're, again, blowing 26 million on Saeed Ben Rama. Your tactic is fine, right? You can win the Champions League playing a tactic that looks like this. You need strong midfielders. You have Suchek and Gagliardini. Like, these guys are good. Naji Univar in front of them is obviously going to be a really good player in the future and is hopefully, for your sake, getting there faster than he normally does. He's not. Still a very long way to go for Nashi Univar. Not somebody you want to rely on right now at 18 years of age, but by the time you get somebody else in to take that spot, he probably will be someone you want to rely on. So welcome to your situation. But there's nothing inherently wrong with this tactic that you are running. You just need to be aware of its weaknesses that a team can completely overwhelm your midfield and that's going to leave you vulnerable if you ever get swamped too much you can bring the wings back and start them from a deeper position and probably take care of that issue and if you want to be one of the better teams you're going to want to start on positive but starting on balance is not something i ever really advise against keep in mind focusing play down the flanks is going to wear out your wingers much faster wherever you're focusing play is going to force that player to run more it's very specific to football manager 21 so if you find that Yarmolenko and, and Bowen are getting tired easier, they're not able to play the whole game. I'm looking at it right now and Yarmolenko is one of the players, one of the three players in the team that is tired, then you might want to take that off at certain points during the game. What Football Manager wants to introduce is the idea that throughout the game, you're adjusting where you're focusing play. Because if you just give the ball to Mo Salah every time for 90 minutes, he'll be dead exhausted by the time the game ends. That's the idea that they're trying to recreate now. I probably didn't smack you around as much as you would have hoped. Maybe that's what you're into. It's certainly what I'm into on Save Your Saves. Don't read into that. I'll see you on stream. Okay. I'm actually going to go start the stream right now. <laughs>